This is the new Jiyun Weibo 3 and it has a built-in microphone. So hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Marcel and today we'll be talking about Jiyun's newest gimbal which is the Weibo 3 and it's the updated version of the Weibo 2 that we saw come out last year in 2021. The Weibo 3 is actually a very surprising gimbal. I've had the chance to use it for the last couple of weeks and my experiences have been actually really great and I think I like this Weibo 3 more than the Weibo 2. First of all, the Weibo 3 is a tad smaller, and there are new features on this Weibo 3, some that I really, really like. So in terms of brand new features that this Weibo 3 has, it has a built-in microphone directly here on the gimbal. So once you put your camera over here, you have this built-in mic over here, right there. That's where the built-in mic is. It is a cardioid microphone that is noise canceling and it picks up audio from the front and the sides and does not really pick up audio from the back, which is a good thing because when you're using this gimbal, you wanna capture the audio of stuff that's in front of you anyway. The port at the back that you can use to enable that microphone is actually a 2.5 millimeter port, not to be confused with a regular 3.5 millimeter. You can include this 3.5 to 2.5 millimeter cable. As you can see, the 2.5 is a little bit smaller than the 3.5. This is the part that goes into the gimbal, and this is the part that we go to the mic input in your camera. So this is where the microphone input is. So you connect the 2.5 millimeter input over here, and this other one would go to the mic port in your camera. So you may wonder why would anybody want to use a microphone built in on a gimbal to capture audio. You may want to use a separate external microphone or maybe a shotgun mic on top of your camera. But there is a very good case scenario for this and in my experience testing it, the audio quality is actually pretty decent sounding and I'll show you some clips later on. You're able to get nice audio off the ambient or whatever scene you're capturing. So for example, when I was filming this skateboarder, the audio that I was able to get felt immersive as the skateboarder came closer to the gimbal, the sound got louder and as the skateboarder went away from the gimbal, the sound got softer. In my opinion, this sort of audio brings more life to your video as opposed to just adding skateboarding sounds later digitally in post. You probably won't be using this microphone on the gimbal for a sit down interview. For vlogging perhaps, I will still go with the shotgun microphone, but it's a good alternative to have this for capturing action footage and if you wanna capture the audio that comes along with that footage. So this is what the microphone in the gimbal sounds like at different distances. So right now I have this microphone right in front of me and this is what the audio sounds like. This is the audio coming directly from the microphone built-in on the Weibo 3. Hello, my name is Mario So and this is the Weibo 3 with a built-in microphone. Hello, my name is Mario So and this is the Weibo 3 with a built-in microphone. And if I have this gimbal at about a, an arm's length and if you were to vlog with this, which is a little bit of a heavier setup, but if you wanted to use the mic on this gimbal, this is what it would sound like. This is the Weibo 3 with its built-in microphone. This is the Weibo 3 with its built-in microphone. So let me know what the audio sounds like. Does it sound good? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. This Weibo 3 also has a brand new sling structure. June calls it the 2.0 sling structure. It has a new extendable sling handle right here that you now attach, sorry, to the gimbal. And this sling arm is extendable, so it can extend a little bit further this way. Let's lock it and attach it to our gimbal. If you wanted to strip the gimbal down to compact size, you can get rid of it. But if you wanted to use it and get another point of contact for under slug mode, you're able to use this. The Weibo 3 also comes with a wrist rest that you can attach to the other thread on the opposite side where this sling handle goes. So you just attach it right there and what it actually does, it just acts 
as a support for your wrist. So this gives you an extra point of contact with your hand and your wrist, and it's actually more comfortable to hold. It makes the whole experience a lot more ergonomic and a lot more friendly and easy on your wrist. This is what it looks like with the wrist handle. It actually makes it quite nice. So this gimbal has a battery life of up to 21 hours, which is insane. To put that into perspective, the Weevil 2 had a battery run time of nine hours. So this doubles it and adds on a few more hours as well. And this supports USB-C fast charge. And this is where you would charge your battery, the USB-C at the bottom. That explains this little foot L-shaped like base on this new Weevil 3. This is where the new battery is located. As you can see, they needed to make this a little bit bigger to put in the bigger battery that lasts 21 hours. And now with that base, you can just lay it on the floor or on a table. And once you have these two attached, it's able to stand on its own, even without this tripod leg. So very thoughtful in the design of where the battery was placed for this. The Weibo 3 now also has a built-in fill light, unlike the Weibo 2, but similar to that fill light that comes on the Crane M3 and on the Crane M2S. It has a brightness of 1000 lumens and it has an adjustable color temperature. So this is at its max brightness, 10% brightness, and adjusting the color temperature from 2600 Kelvin all the way to 5400. So to turn on the fill light, you can go onto the fill light scroll wheel, hold that button, and it'll turn on that fill light. And once there, you can go to the LCD screen right here and adjust, press down once, and you can adjust the lumens, how bright it is, and tap it again, and now you can adjust that color temperature. Hold that down, and the light turns off. The Weeble 3 has an upgraded motor from the Weeble 2 and it's quite lightweight. It actually weighs 1.24 kilograms or 2.7 pounds. The Weeble 2 in comparison was a little heavier at 1.5 kilograms or 3.3 pounds. This is closer in weight to the original Weeble S, which was a little lighter at 1.1 kilogram or 2.4 pounds. The motors in my experience shooting with this seem very strong, very similar to the Weevil 2. I had a Sony a7 IV with a Tamron 2875 zoom lens, and I was shooting at different focal lengths and even all the way extended it out at 75 millimeters with the barrel fully extended out. The gimbal handled that actually very well and was very stable even at 75 mil. I have yet to test this with a heavier setup, but I'll try that in the coming days just to see how it handles a heavier setup. We also get an upgraded quick release system. And now you have a double plate. There's this smaller plate you can attach to your camera and the bigger plate, the Manfrotto-like long plate that you can just leave on the gimbal. That way, once you have your camera balanced, all you need to do is just attach it to the small plate and slide that in. And that ensures that you don't have to rebalance your camera setup as long as you put your camera onto this plate and not the long plate. So you have this small plate that you can attach to your camera. Once you put your camera in there, slide that in and lock that plate. So once you have your gimbal balanced, all you need to do is, you don't have to touch this long plate at all anymore. All you need to do is take off this small plate if you wanna take off your camera. So to take that off, just switch that lever to the unlock position. There's a little button you can push you push it to unlock it, and now you slide the camera out. So the gimbal stays the way it is. Now your camera is out. You can go handheld real quick and quickly put it back once you're ready to go back on the gimbal. So this is the plate attached to the camera. If you don't have like a little screw or something like that, you're not able to tighten this. So another detail, small detail that they included is a magnetic wrench. If you go to the bottom of the plate, you find this magnetic wrench right here that you can just simply detach right there and put it back whenever you're done. So with this, you can take it out and now you can go and tighten your plate. Small detail, but very useful detail. There's also an improved axis, three axis locking mechanism, which I like better than the Weeble 2. This is what the axis lock looked like on the Weeble 2. So it's not too bad, but now 
you get this. A lot more sturdy and bigger and it slides up and down to lock or unlock. That's one. There's one here for the panning axis and lock it again, lock it. And one here for the tilting axis. The positioning of the buttons, it's all different now with this gimbal. The power button is now near the base. And as I mentioned earlier, that's where the battery is. So it makes sense that it's there. It's not that great in my opinion that it's all the way down there. Cause sometimes I like to access that power button easily with my thumb or my index fingers. Now I have to go all the way down and potentially either place this down or use two hands in order to power it on and off. On the right, you get your mode button. So you can quickly toggle between the different options and the different modes. If you tap it twice, you enter POV mode. Tap it one more time, go back to pan follow. If you're in POV mode, if you tap it another two times, you go to vortex mode. You can use this joystick over here to pan your gimbal and tilt the gimbal. And it's placed in a position where it's easily accessible along with the record button if you have a camera that's compatible with that. On the front, you have a scroll wheel that you can map to any function on the gimbal. Right now I have mine mapped to roll, to the roll axis. So if you scroll, you'll roll the camera. You have a trigger button that you can customize as well. If you double tap, it resets the gimbal to its starting position. If you triple tap, you can access selfie mode. And I tap it three times again, it goes back to the reset position as well. And on this side of the gimbal, you get the menu button to access different parameters and controls, and you get the fill light button. The one thing about this gimbal is that if you are not right-handed, your thumb would not be able to control these. So say you were left-handed, your thumb now is on this side, but now you are not able to play around with the joysticks and stuff like that because you're left-handed. So that is, in my opinion, a little bit of a design flaw, but since I'm right-handed, it fits perfectly. And it doesn't bother me at all, but something to consider. In terms of pricing, the standard kit comes at 449 US dollars. So that is going to include all the cables you need, including the one for the microphone, the lens holder, and the little tripod. You also get magnetic color gels for to be exact that you can attach to your fill light. Now you can change that temperature and color of your fill light with the different gels. That's a red one. There's a yellow and an orange one. The combo package of this gimbal costs 529 US dollars. And on top of what you include on the standard version, you also get a gimbal bag, this handle, and the wrist rest. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something new. And let me know in the comments below what you think about having that microphone in the front of your gimbal. Do you think you'll use it? Let me know in the comments below. As usual, I'm leaving links in the description below to check the Weeble 3 out if you're interested. And if you do purchase using one of my links below, I get a small commission at no additional cost to you. So your support will be greatly appreciated. So that's it for today's video. I'll see you next time.